So guys, we're here for the third part of the history of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I want to say thank you to my sponsor, Spider Korea. So let's remember uh, the last video when I was talking about Kodokan Judo and the importance of the development of the tr traditional Jiu-Jitsu. And we end up talking about Matai Montanabe and his challenge against Kodokan Judo. And so first of all, let me explain a little bit who was Matai Montanabe. So Matai Montanabe was a fourth generation of Fusen Hill masters, is a style of Koryu Jiu-Jitsu. And the founder of the style taught his grandfather, then the grandfather taught his father, and Matai Mon started to train at nine years old with his father. And when he was a teenager, he started to travel and participate in competitions and, and challenges. Uh, the, uh, it's important to, to understand that the Fusen Hill Jiu Jitsu was a style based on wrist locks like cow hands, this kind of thing that we know in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as mão de vaca, cow hand. And looks like the, the ground fight was not the main focus of Fusen Hill, and it was something that Tanab improved a lot and put a lot of emphasis on that training. And it's very likely also that he did a lot of Handori, uh, the, the sparring sessions, as a way of training, just like the members of Kodokan. And Tanabe, if you, if you research about him, you're going to see that there is an a interview with him that he says that his Jujutsu was much more a result of the challenge that he participated than what he learned from his teachers. So we can, we can uh, understand that, you know, he developed not just from Fusion Hill, but also from all this, everything he experienced through his competitive career. And in 1891, Tanabe moves to Tokyo and becomes instructor of the Metropolitan Police Department. And then, he challenged another uh, instructor there. The name is Taksaburu Tobari. He challenged him to a fight. And Tobari was a former Tejin Shinyo Hyo Jiu Jitsu practitioner and also a third degree black belt in Judo. So Tanabe starts the fight and he finally gets the, the, the fight to the ground and win by choking Tobari. And Tobari, you know, he got really upset. And during the next years, he would challenge Tanabe two more times, but he will lose every time. So that's when Tanabe starts to establish himself as a, as a great fighter. Uh, and it's one thing that is not clear if it was just Tanabe who fought the guys from Kodokan, or there was a challenge between Fusen Hill and the Kodokan school. But very likely it was Tanabe and other, other uh, fighters who used to train with him, not necessarily the Fusen Hill guys. And between 1892 uh, and 895, Tanabe challenged, challenged Kodokan many times and win them all. Uh, Looks like, you know, it seems like he even challenged Jigoro Kano, but there was no answer for that. And until the end of his career, he would fight a lot of fighters from Kodokan. And he, as I research here, he lose just twice, but mostly he won the fights. And during this boat, Tanabe, why he, why, why he was surprising the Kodokan guys and winning because he was a very good stand-up fighter, you know, like had good throws, but basically he would take the fight to the ground as quick as he could and using techniques that were not so familiar with the Kodokan fighters. And so they, he was able to all, almost the fights by submission. And until that time, the Kodokan Judo had not too much focus on the ground work. Basically, you know, they, they would work on trolls and they had some ground works, but not, you know, with that much of focus. And 
uh, one, one, one thing that I also research is that Tanabe used to do a lot of uh, sacrifice tools, like what we call in Jiu-Jitsu, the balloon takedowns, or in Judo, it's Tomoe Nagi. And, and if the takedown didn't work, he would just start to doing guard and be in his comfort zone. And also, uh, it's reported that he used to do a lot of heel hooks, so he used to do the Tomoe Nagi or the balloon, the balloon in, in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And when it didn't work, he would go to the heel hooks and submit the, the Judo guys, because in that time it was allowed, even in Judo, to do heel hooks. And of course, with all those wins, he earned a lot of respect, and he was called to be part of the, the Dai Nippon Botukokai. That's a, a organization that, you know, the translation would be the Great House of Martial Art, Martial Excellence in Japan. And it was founded in 1895 in Kyoto to promote Japanese martial arts. He is one, along with Jigoro Kano, one of the 20 masters chosen to develop Jujutsu in Dainipon Botukokai. And around that time also, Tanabe trains at the school of Master Yataro Honda, uh, the Honda jo Dojo in Osaka. There would have training partners like Yukio Tani, Taro Miyake, Sadakazu Uenishi, who would later travel to the world doing challenges against other fighters, teaching and spreading Jiu-Jitsu uh, around the world. And also in Honda Dojo, uh, looks like they were doing a lot of newaza, the ground fighting, because they are pretty much focused on training for challenges. Uh, there were there was happening a lot of challenge, so uh, they 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 knew that could be a good a good advantage if they they train ground work because not everybody was used with that, and so in this Honda jo dojo from Master Yataro Honda. Uh, they would do a lot of ground, ground game in Ewaza. And Yataro Honda was a master of the Shin, Shino Ryu and Daito Ryu Jiu Jitsu. But there they train a lot of styles. They train those styles and they train Fusen Ryu, Sekigushi Ryu, Yoshin Ryu, Takenoshi Ryu, many, many styles, but with a lot of focus on Handori and on the ground, uh, Handori ground sparring. And those fights of Tanabe against the Kodokan guys really opening the eyes of the, the judo fighters to the importance of the, the ground game. And of course, Jigoro Kano realized that right away and implemented that, uh, give more importance uh, to that in the judo curriculum. And, and even he invited a lot of uh, people who knew a good newaza, a good ground game to teach at Kodokan. It's believed also, but nobody knows if it's true or not, that Kano also tried to hire Tanaka, ta to hire Tanabe to teach ground, ground uh, fighting techniques at Kodokan, but that's, that's not really clear. Uh, after this challenge, there was a boom of ground fighting in Kodokan. So a lot of people were studying that and, and was kind of, uh, uh, people start to really put attention on that. And at the same time, a young man named Mitsuyo Maeda started training in Kodokan. And Mitsuyo Maeda will be very, very important to the history of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because he's the, the one who will come to Brazil and will teach the Grace family. But this is, it's a subject that we're going to talk in the next video. Thank you very much, guys, and I see you in the next video.